Welcome to Class In Session. My name is Afia Hagen and I'll be your host for today's episode, which covers what life is like after university. Now, after graduating university, students enter a pivotal phase of transition, facing new possibilities and decisions that will take them closer to their dream career. You may have to navigate career options, putting your learning into practice, network to find the opportunities or further fight your inner critic that may crop up when new opportunities arise. It's a time of both excitement and uncertainty as you begin to contemplate your next steps in the professional world. Now I'm going to speak to Georgina, Betsy and True and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Georgina, you first. Hi, I'm Professor Georgina Harris. I'm the Dean of STEM here at Arden University. Thank you. Georgina, Betsy, over to you. Hi, I'm Betsy Matthews. I'm a careers consultant here at Arden University. I've been here for about 14 months. Nice. True, over to you. Thank you. Hi, my name is True Powell and I am an entrepreneur. I am the CEO of the Black Business Magazine. I also won the Inspire Award and I help entrepreneurs with their personal branding and visibility. Amazing. Guys, it's great to have you here. Betsy, I'm going to come to you first. <laughs> what are the biggest apprehensions the students have as they get close to finishing that degree? What are they most worried about? I think what they're most worried about is, is the job at the end. You know, they focus so much that they've had this journey of doing the qualification and everything's quite structured and then suddenly it's so-and-so has been offered a job um, and it's kind of just thinking, what am I going to do now? Have I done enough? Have I got the right skills? Have I got ex enough experience? And it's, it's just everything coming to, to the surface. And mm -hmm. so there's quite a lot of apprehensions, if I'm honest. Georgina, what do you find that students are most concerned about? What do they talk to you about as they get to the, the kind of final weeks of uni? I think people have a, an unusual impression of what a career is. They think they've got this ideal target and they've got to make this massive leap from where they are now right into this final episode of their life and they're going to be there forever. It's a very old-fashioned notion of what a career is today. Mm -hmm. Today actually um, people move from role to role and they, they follow their, their, their joy, the thing that gives them purpose in life. So I, I mean I'm, I'm very fortunate I've managed to follow the shiny thing all my career and as an academic everybody will tell you that's what we do, we follow the shiny thing. So you see a job come up and you think that sounds nuts, ooh I should apply, that sounds actually that's quite exciting. Uh, so my career has taken me in all sorts of different directions because I've been following that shiny thing, the thing that interests me, the next big step. And I think students have to remember that the jobs they might be applying for are things that haven't even been invented yet. Mm. A uh, quadcopter pilot wasn't a thing when I was studying. Um, a lot of the new technologies that are coming along today, they weren't around when I first trained. You have to keep yourself current and you have to follow, the, follow what brings you joy. And then you basically don't have to work a day in your life, but you don't have to worry about making that one big leap. Go for the thing that, you, that appeals, go for the thing that makes you feel comfortable and that you enjoy. And, and then keep following that as you go along. How is how important is it that students have lecturers that are industry-led and um, throughout their time at university and are up to date? Well, personally, I think it's, it's vital. Um, it's not just about the academics, though. I think the academics are absolutely pivotal in supporting students and showing them the relevance of what they're teaching with what they can be doing with it and what their career, how they could use it in a career going forward. But it's also about the engagement that the academics have with the wider industry around them. So, you know, we, we are getting older as well. It's really important that we continue to talk to industry about what's now, what's next, what's the big shiny thing that's coming down the tracks. So we're not preparing our students for the jobs that are just in the jobs market now. We have to be preparing our students for the jobs that are just around the corner. And we can see them, we know they're there. We might not know exactly what form they take, but we have to be preparing them and giving that giving them the skill set that will enable them to engage with those jobs going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's not just about the academics, it's about the structure and nature of what we do here at Arden University, which is not just the academics assuming that they know everything, but engaging with that wider community around us. And we're very fortunate that we've got these wonderful campuses so we can engage with the industries around each of our campuses. And that gives us an even broader picture of what we should be doing for our students. 
True, as an entrepreneur, how important do you think it is um, to make sure that students are exposed to industry while they're studying? Oh, that is vitally important. You need to be immersed into any sector that you're thinking about going into. So if we take events, for example, events is probably 70% of what my entire businesses do. And when I studied events at university, and it's very different to being live on site at an event, and we've we have quite a lot of students come and experience um, the events with us and their eyes are open they're like wow like it's fast paced it's busy it's stressful a lot of the things that are not taught um, as part of the degree with that real life experience so my advice to anybody is if you can get real life experience and have a taste about what real life will be in that industry then embrace it with both hands because it's going to be so so valuable Let's see, how can, you know, Arden and students make sure that industry experience is is something that's given to them throughout their degree so that when they get to that point where they're about to leave university, they're not like shell-shocked and yeah. worried and exposed? I think it's just taking um, every opportunity as it comes. You know, as a career service, we put on different events, we bring in employers, we give them opportunities to network. Um, Any time there's a, an internship opportunity or a, a different scheme that's going on, we try and get that out to students. Um, and and we, we meet them on day one, even before they start with Arden, because careers doesn't, doesn't start at level six when they're about to graduate. It should start at day one. So if they start to engage with us right from that very starting point, then they will utilise the opportunities, they will do the things that they need to do so that they're not shell-shocked, and then they'll do the work experience, they'll go to events, and they won't be, they'll have that confidence to go and attack it and be more competitive. Mm. Georgina, mentoring is also hugely important, especially when it comes to um, supporting women in STEM. Talk to me about that a little bit. So I've been very fortunate to be able to support and mentor a whole host of um, both students and other colleagues. And it's actually a huge privilege to be able to help somebody reach their full potential or at least, at least help them on the, along the journey. Um, I think it's vital that um, we listen to what people actually want to engage with, with the, for their career. Um, everybody's already ta said beautifully that how important it is to engage with those activities that come your way, volunteer get involved in activities at your workplace that aren't necessarily part of your job, but that sound more interesting. Find out how, how they fit. See, see if you enjoy them. If you're enjoying them, that's obviously going to be an area you might want to explore more. Um, I also think it's a bit of a, a false dichotomy these days. There's the idea that there's university and then there's a great moment and then we go on to our career. Actually, for most students these days, this is a lovely networked hybrid a journey where you've got a mix of both going on all at the same time um, and obviously as academics we try and bring that into the classroom for you as well so um, bringing in real life briefs from uh, from industry around us allowing um, industrialists to come and give you feedback during your uh, coursework and your uh, major projects um, it's amazing there's, there's a certain way as an academic we like to give feedback and we like to be supportive and nurturing but there's also a huge advantage to letting the fox see the rabbit by bringing in an industrialist who will just tell you what they think of your project mm -hmm. and whether you think it met the brief and whether they would or would not be keen to support the project going forward. And that's an experience that as an academic, um, no matter how hard we try, they don't, our students don't necessarily believe us, it's a, but it's a really lovely, rich experience for the students to actually experience that, as you described, true. Um, and um, to be there to support them in trying to make sure, well, the next time we're presenting to that industrialist, we're going to make these changes and then you can show that you have done that and you've, you're able to convey that perhaps more effectively next time. Mm -hmm. So that mentoring and coaching, again, it's not a standalone thing. It's throughout the qualification. It's throughout your time out in industry. Um, and you're a very lucky person if you get a bit of, a bit of both, a bit of support mm -hmm. yeah. and mentoring both from industry and from academia. And that, that gives you a much um, much richer experience and you're better prepared really when you go out and you, you, you do take a next step and you go on for, from, from career to career to career. It's an added tool, mm -hmm. isn't it, in your, in your sort of armour. You've got something there to support you. And I think when you have a mentor, um, it's, 
taking away that comfort blanket in a way as well, because as you say, your lecturers can be more supportive and nurturing and coaching, but a mentor can be like, well, I'm in industry mm. and this wouldn't cut it. Or, you know, you, you need to go away and, and try again. And sometimes, like you say, they need that that real sort of rawness um, where the stakes are a little bit higher. And I, I would say I'm big on mentorship. For me, a mentor was vitally important because success leaves clues. Why would I do it all again on my own, in the dark, not knowing where I'm going, <laughs> not knowing what to do, and fail a million times when I can engage with a mentor who's done it already, who's very successful, and who can impart much needed knowledge to help me on my path to success. And when we speak about mentor, mentors, we often speak solely about human beings, which is great, but we need to remember that mentors can come in different guises. You know, you could have get knowledge and mentorship from a book, you know, and I have done that many times. There's a book that I always read that's almost like my Bible of in, in business to what I do. You know, there's podcasts now, they're on the rise. You can get so much knowledge, especially from those people who deliver content, content weekly about business and about guidance and about different areas of business. You can engage with their content and they will give you weekly hints and tips. My advice to anybody is really think about mentorship but approach everything with discernment do your due diligence if you are engaging with a mentor make sure that they do what they say that they do because believe it or not there are some people out there that claim mentorship and haven't actually done what they say they that they do so make sure you do your due diligence on the mentors and make sure you are you, you know you approach everything with discernment Betsy, how can students and how can Arden help students find mentors? I mean, Chu's made some really good points about podcasts and books and things like that. But what if somebody wants to engage with someone who's in their industry, who's, you know, 10 or 20 years down the road? How can um, they find that person? How can Arden help them find that person? I mean, if they want to do it informally, I'd start to just look at their own sort of network. Who do they know? That's always the best starting point, family, friends. And then who do they know? Who do they work for? Can they put them in touch with somebody? You know, it doesn't have to be the CEO of a massive corporation. You know, it can be a small business owner where they're just going to learn some small steps. But as a starting point, if, if they don't know where to go, I would always say, come to us. You know, we have um, lots of career experts that we can put them in the right direction. We can tailor that support. We can talk to them one to one to see what it is they're trying to get out of a mentor and just get them started. LinkedIn's a great starting mm -hmm. point as well. Um, I would, I, that's the first thing I tell students, you, know, you need to get on there, you need to start communicating with the people that you wanna be associated with, the people that you want, who you want to work with in the future and build up that commercial knowledge, it, your awareness, because that's kind of like your secret weapon. Mm -hmm. If you don't know anything about that you know, industry you want to work in, you're not going to be able to seek the opportunities. You're not going to be aware of them. Mm. Now, Georgina, do you think that it mostly falls to academics to make sure that your students are career ready and industry ready? I don't think it's the exclusive role of, of the academic team. I think obviously we, we're invested in our students. Um, I have to say after the length of career I've had, there's nothing, there's nothing makes you prouder than seeing a student who's surpassed you, <laughs> done an amazing job at that. And they're in the career they've always wanted and they've got this huge grin on your face and you think, I had something to do with that. It makes that you so me. proud. Um, but I do think it's, um, you know, the, it's, the old, it's the old idea of, you know, a, a village educates a young person. It's not just the academic role, it's a community's role. So. Um, I would say things like our professional bodies. So here at Arden, for people in my faculty, we pay for you to be a member of a professional body. That's a community of practice. So you're working with professionals that are early stage careers. They might be retired, anything in between, lots of different industries. It's an opportunity to explore what, you, what, what fits for you, what might be the next step for you. And it's a group of people who are volunteering. They've got a bit of time. They actually are, find it really nice to be asked. I would like you to be my mentor. It's a bit of a, ooh, that's, that's, isn't that nice? I've been asked to be a mentor. So 
Um, find those communities of practice around your discipline, around the areas you want to go into, and be cheeky. People actually um, really enjoy the idea and the ability to pass on the, what they've learned, pass on their expertise and their experience to people. Um, take advantage of that. Take advantage of that with more than one, pe one person. Get lots of views, to get lots of opinions. Um, and obviously then in, the, in that process, um, it's surprising how the people that you've talked to and the people that you've learned from suddenly, oh, I've heard there's a job coming up in this career over here. My friend said that there's a place I could connect the dots for you there. So you're already building those networks, building those pathways for yourself in the future. Um, and the PSRBs are not the only one. The professional statutory bodies are not the only ones. Um, I'm in a women in motorsport community. Um, you can go and do marshalling, engineering, uh, sports science. There's all sorts of things available for each of these communities that you never really knew was there. Mm. Um, and the only disappointing thing, I think, I, I'm sure everybody around the table has got the same experience. I wish I'd known this <laughs> 20, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> I was just Amen. thinking that about myself, actually. I think I wish when I was leaving university, sort of like, you know, 500 years ago, that I had thought about professional bodies and had better mentorship because it's so important to get good advice, isn't it, True? Mm, oh, 100%. I think... And good career advice. Good well. career advice is really important, especially when you are starting your career because it's so easy to make wrong turns. Mm. It's so easy to make mistakes. And I'm not saying making mistakes is always a bad thing because we learn from those mistakes, right? But if we can avoid making those mistakes, that why not? Why not speak? Why not get a mentor? Why not get that career advice? So I'm I'm all for career advice. I remember speaking to my careers advisor and I really wanted to go into events and we sat down and <laughs> You know, and, and we had a long conversation about the avenues, the events that I wanted to do, and, and really put things in perspective and made me understand, actually, oh, I, I don't think I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do entertainment events. You know, I want to work with Beyonce. And at the time, it was Destiny's Child. Yeah. You know, all of that <laughs> all been there. Yeah. yeah. And those were the events that I wanted to do, and it really helped. And, and getting that advice, I think, really, really, you know, started, my, start, gave me the right direction to go and start my career, which... I didn't work with Destiny's Child, but you know, I worked with other people um, <laughs> like Music Soul Child and, and, and After Lights, which was really great. But um, it, it made me realize what type of event that I wanted to, to do. Um, and Betsy, of course, you know, if that's your area. Yeah, and what I was gonna say is part of my job is actually opening students' eyes and, mm. you know, because there's lots of misconceptions. Mm. You know, people, can't, they, they start up with a degree and they think they're gonna go on to this job or, you know, and sometimes it's like saying, what do you know about that job? Mm. What do you know about that career? Mm. You know, what research have you done? And then, you know, we can help them to kind of actually unpick whether it does align with their values, whether it aligns with their motivation. Yeah. Is that the role they want to do? Mm. And I think as well, it's sometimes managing students' expectations. expectations. Mm. Key. Because when I left my uh, degree in journalism, I was convinced I was going to be reading the 10 o'clock news the day after my graduation. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite you pan out like that. No. How dare they? Fuming. Yeah. <laughs> now. No, you know, I think if I'd really sat down with a careers advisor or a mentor would have prepared me that I'm going to be actually making tea <laughs> and getting people's dry cleaning and do, doing all the mm. other jobs that it takes to get there. But that's it, isn't it? It's about managing your expectations and that's so important isn't it yeah and also just not being closed as well because like you said you you wanted to go into events and you know but kind of broadening the horizons yeah. that yes this might be an area of interest but there's so many different things that you can do mm. with the skills that you're building and another thing I think which is really important is managing people's um, expectations of what their workplace might be like Georgina and to all of you actually because Bardon University especially is a hugely diverse community, but where they go to work might not be. And that can be challenging for students, can't it, Georgina? I think it's about finding, finding your community out in the workplace. So um, finding that you are surrounded by people who have the same sort of interests as you and the same passions as you, that's your happy place. That's where you want to be. So, you know, for those of us who are lucky enough to be academics, we're surrounded by other academics, even in different disciplines. 
Um, we've got that same passion for teaching. We've got the same passion for supporting our students. So you've got a kinship there and it's automatic. In other careers, it's not quite so easy because you've got perhaps a, a, a range of disciplines and a range of motivations all going into that one business. Um, and sometimes that can make you feel a little bit like a fish out of water initially. Um, and it's, again, it's about that experience and, and building up that picture of this is the community I'm in, this group do, does perhaps something a little different to me, but they, they're, they're influencing and engaging with the generation of new knowledge or products or wealth or whatever it is, um, and also how to communicate with them. So even within my own areas of STEM, the same words can mean so many different things dependent on the discipline. So it's important we learn how to talk to other disciplines. Mm. We have to be able to market a product, so we need to be able to talk to marketing people. We're going to be running events and we want to be showcasing our new products, so we need to be able to talk to them. So it's all about making sure that you're, you're, you're not so completely inward and introverted, that you're not engaging with all the other areas of, of that industry, but also building that little community, that safe place, so that when things aren't going right, you've got that team of people around you that can support you. Um, and I think the other thing is that if it's not really a place where you feel you can be yourself, you can't bring your whole self to work, perhaps this isn't the right company for you. I think that's the other thing to be aware of. Um, I do think it's, um, it's an amazing thing when you finally find the place you can work and completely be yourself because you can actually produce more, you do better, um, the, you know, your creative juices flow that bit more easily. Um, and I do think that's something that we should all be striving for and striving to make that for other people. Mm -hmm. So if you're out in the community and you're working with other people and you're a really fantastic person that's fun to be with, uh, works hard, everybody enjoys working with you, you're actually one of the last people that's ever going to get fired because people want to work with you. So it's about bringing that as well with yeah. you. Build that community. Be part of the group that makes it a wonderful place to work. That's so true. I, I also think as well, in terms of getting students ready to go into the workplace, particularly coming out of such a diverse institution, it's being real with the students and, and getting them to critically think, getting them to understand the world that we live in, and also equipping them with tools to manage such spaces. So one of the things you could say is when you go to these workplaces, find an ERG that you connect with an employee resource group and and see what, what you can do, see if you find synergy within that group. I think it's really important that when you go into workplace, representation is there. And if it's not there, if I go into a space and representation is there, personally, I struggle. I struggle with people not looking like me and me thinking or believing that I can reach a certain stature in that organisation. And because of that, I probably won't give it as much as I can because I probably think I'm fighting a losing battle because they're not going to hire anybody that looks like me further than X, Y, Z in senior positions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, really important that we equip students to not only critically think and to, to navigate the world, but to also find solace in groups within workforces so they can make change in, in, in the workforce. And Betsy, how is Arden University supporting to do that, to make sure that, that students are ready? Well, having the conversation first, you know, um, talking with students and their concerns, maybe if they've got um, those particular issues of thinking, you know, nobody looks like me in that industry. Um, we're also, we promote a lot of internships as well that, you know, we've got the um, 100 uh, black interns, we've got, uh, we do a lot of work with access participation. So it's all those different smaller minority groups where we're really trying to um, get them work ready, um, get more exposure to, to those industries so that they can actually be more confident and attack it, you know, and actually be proud. You know, mm. I went to school and I was probably one of the only brown faces. I went to a Catholic school and, you know, it was, in a middle class white area, but you know, I owned it. Mm. It didn't come naturally yeah. to start with. Um, but then in time, as I as I grew up and I went into different roles, you know, it didn't actually bother me um, because I guess I grew my own confidence. And I think that's what I love. And I love the fact that sometimes we can use our difference as our superpower. Yeah. 
sometimes we can use our difference as the, the very thing that helps us yeah. get on because there isn't anybody that thinks like you, that, that you kind of approaches the work in the way that you do and that brings that level of diversity of thought to the workplace. Mm -hmm. And often that diversity of thought is usually what's missing in order for the company to grow. We all know the stats around, you know, companies that are diverse, you know, grow um, a lot quicker than companies that are not diverse. So I think it's important that we don't always, and this is why I say we've got to critically think, we don't always approach our difference as a negative. Sometimes in some instances, it can actually be our superpower. Mm, absolutely. And I think I've certainly throughout my career, I've, I've always used what's different about me is my superpower. Um, definitely. It's always good to do that. Tori, I'm going to fit this to you. Now, we spoke about adopting a lifelong learning mindset or a growth mindset in our previous episode. Um, does this play an important role post-graduation as well? Oh, 100%. And you couldn't ask this to a better person. I... <laughs> I'm a believer of having a growth mindset. You know, I've, I've studied Carol Dweck and understand growth and fixed mindset to the T. And I think it's really, really important that when you do go out into the world and you do start working or you do start entrepreneurship, you have a growth mindset. You want to see challenges as opportunities. You want to take on board criticism so you learn from that criticism so you can grow. You don't want to have a fixed mindset where you're just, you're, you're, you're solely fixated and it's your way or the highway because you will not grow. You will not move past a certain point. And I think it's really, really important that you embody this growth mindset so you're able to grow into the world and you're able to become the best version of yourself. And I'm so big on growing and, you know, improving myself and reading and studying and listening to podcasts and doing all things that would allow me to grow to be the best version of myself. So I'm all about having a growth mindset. Mm. Georgina, how important is that for you and your career and for your students as well? Well, I think as, as somebody who's working in the STEM environment, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, if I taught the students what I learned at my undergraduate course, they'd be obsolete <laughs> instantly. So no you've jobs for got them. to yeah. keep up to date. You've got to keep uh, learning about the new technologies, pushing those boundaries, doing the research yourself, um, and staying current. It, it, it's, it's the battle that we're all against. You know, we're all up against. I think the other thing is that um, uh, you know, throughout throughout my progression in my career, I've had the massive advantage that I work with students. I can tell you right now, if anybody's going to ask you a really smart question you can't answer, it will be a student because they come fresh to the problem. Yeah. Why don't we do it like that? Then, mm, I don't know, actually. <laughs> that's a good question. Maybe I should go and find out. Um, so those are, you know, though, that's a huge advantage with being in an academic community that the questioning, we, we value the question. We value um, the opportunity to explore why things are the way they are or maybe they should be in a different way. But I do think um, being able to continue with that continuing professional development, to mature, to develop those skill sets, it's vital in your career. Um, and so many of the professions and disciplines that Arden teaches um, and covers with their degrees are linked to um, professional standing, professional registration, um, the gold badges, as we like to describe them, that, that get you the best jobs, get you the best salaries. Um, and uh, to be to be blunt, as, as, as somebody who also found themselves in a career where they didn't necessarily look like everybody that, I was, that they were working with, having the gold badge is also a little bit of a shield. So mm -hmm. that feeling of, well, I know I'm right because I've got my little gold badge and I knew I knew I was doing the right thing. Um, and I, you know, I was professionally trained and I am I am a specialist in my discipline. Um, and it can be sometimes just the language somebody will use with you mm. suggests that you don't look like me, you don't quite sound like me, perhaps you don't know as much as I do. Don't belong. And it's, it, again, it helps build the confidence when you've been able to um, get those gold badges, just as a mechanism of kind of shielding yourself from, the, uh, from I, those I, problems. I completely agree. And I think that's why it's also important to have a growth mindset, particularly if you're different, particularly if you've got uh, you know, a characteristic and you're... You, you you will get those microaggressions. You will get people telling you you're not good enough or implying that you're not good enough or why you're here or and all of those things. And 
if you didn't have a growth mindset, if you allowed those things to get to you, if you allowed those things to, to, um, to you, it would it would stunt your growth. So it's mm -hmm. important, particularly, and I couldn't stress this enough, particularly if you have a level of a diversity, you must develop a growth mindset because the world, unfortunately, isn't ready for difference just yet. And we and, and until they are ready for difference, we have to make sure that we it doesn't impact our growth and having a growth mindset will do that for us. Betsy, how can um, you try and instill in students this growth mindset mentality? Um, I think just making sure they understand that careers are not linear. Mm. Um, I always refer to the squiggly career. And I say, mine went like this and it, mm. you know, it didn't, all, I, my salary didn't always go like this. Mm. You know, and having that growth mindset, like you've pointed out, is, is you've got to be able to see things through different lenses. You know, you you are going to get setbacks. So we have, to, like that expectations, you are going to have set challenges, setbacks, you know, somebody closing the door on you. But it's about how do you never navigate around that closed door? Because there'll be another door. You've just got to find it. You've got to find that route. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, because we do a lot of coaching with students and trying to just, get them to think outside the box. Mm. And that's so important, isn't it? <clears throat> um, Georgine, I'm gonna to come to you with our final question. What is your top advice for those who are nearing graduation? How can they quieten that kind of imposter syndrome, that inside noise and tap into their personal power to ensure success after graduation? I'm not sure I could ever tell you how to quiet the, the inner <laughs> critic permanently. I think we've all got that, that little imposter syndrome gremlin that sits on our shoulders, no matter where you are or, or how successful you are. Um, I think all you can do is ensure that when you're looking for a, a, a new opportunity that you do your research, make sure you've read around the subject before you go into the interview. Make sure you, if you, if you have the opportunity, do a little bit of uh, cyber stalking on the <laughs> internet, find out about the person that's interviewing you. It's important to have all that background knowledge. You, you go in kind of with your little, your armor on then. Um, I think be resilient. Not everybody's going to love you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I, but I only want to be talking to the people who do. So that's, that's also good. Yes. So <laughs> just go for the, go for those places where you feel at home. Um, and I think, uh, never give up. If you're the sort of person that um, never gives up, you only really lose or don't achieve what you want to achieve when you stop trying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just be aware, some of the most successful people I know, I mean, with, you know, knighted by queens and all sorts of exciting <laughs> things, and they failed just as much really? as everybody else. The only difference is that they didn't sit down and say, oh, woe is me, I've got to, give up, I am clearly not up to it. They wouldn't be told, they wouldn't be told by anybody that this was not the right thing for them. Mm -hmm. They had a passion for it, they were going to do it whether anybody would let them do it or not. And I think if you just take that approach and you keep trying and trying and trying, I think you will get there. Yeah. Perseverance and hard work always will out. Mm -hmm. mm. True. what was your top tips be? Oh, I couldn't agree more, but I, I, I think for me, I will keep going, keep pushing. I think don't let fear stop you. You know, it's what I say is false evidence appearing real. You know, there is always success on the other side of fear. And I remember actually my mentor once says to me, mentor, um, once says to me, where do you think all the major ideas are? And I was like, well, I don't know, people's heads, I don't know. And he was like, <laughs> No, they're in the graveyard. You know, people actually die with their ideas because they're too scared to actualize them. They're too scared to go forth with them. And from that day, I was like, no, that's not going to be me. Like, I'm going to try every single idea that pops into my head. And I've probably had about 30 businesses, <laughs> you know, you know, some failed, some successful. But for me, it's important that I tried and that I haven't stopped going and I haven't stopped beating the drum because you know, success lies on the other side of fear. And if you keep pushing and if you want it bad enough, then you will, you know, you will get that level of success and you will get the career that not only that you want, but that you deserve. Mm -hmm. So um, just keep pushing. What was your top tips for you, Betsy? 
Uh, I think I would say stay in your own lane. Mm. Like quieten the noise yes. around you because it doesn't matter what they're doing or Sally over there is doing. It, it's about what you want, what's important to you, what you want to get out of life. And then you w won't be scared of fear mm. because you won't be too busy looking at everybody else. Yeah. Stay in your own lane. Yeah. I'm going to take that one for myself. You actually. can have it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Betsy. I needed that advice. Um, and Georgina, and True, and Betsy, thank you so much um, for sitting down with me to discuss this episode and um, focusing on lifelong learning and time after university, which can be scary. Um, but I think we've got lots of tips from you guys on how you can really excel, growth mindset, staying in our own lane, seeking mentorship, professional bodies, everything. Guys, thank you so very much for all, all that information you've given us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, regardless of where you sit in your journey, we hope the Class in Session series has inspired and shown that you two are more than capable of reaching the career of your dreams. If you want to listen to all our other episodes or wish to save them to re-listen to another time, please visit Arden University, Spotify or YouTube. This has been Class in Session.